Welcome back to the most professional Starcraft 2, our first finalist in the bottom right in the blue. The Protoss we don't deserve, but the one we need right now. The Smiling Assassin. It's Hero. Once again stacked up against the seven-time GSL champion, looking for number eight, the Ocho. It's the man, the myth, the Maru. A best of seven, Terran versus Protoss Grand Finals to the GSL Season 1 of 2000. In 24, yes, in current year, Maru versus Hero, having it out once again. And in current year, I'm still begging you for likes. And if you haven't made it there yet, subscribes. And thank you again to GSL for providing these games for absolutely everyone for for this season and for the 14 years before it. Oh my God. Anyways, Jimmy, what are we? 1,294 likes on this series, on this cast, and they'll cast another one. And I'll probably do it anyways. I don't know what else I would do with my life. But thank you for watching. Hopefully you've had a good day so far. And hopefully it's about to get just a little bit better. Blink. Game one. Oceanborn. As Mauro with a defensive style. I'm going to say it early and you guys can give me a, a report card at the end. But being the grand finals and maybe an introduction. I know there aren't too many new players to uh, the game for at least someone out there. I'm going to do my best. Even if these are builds we've seen before and, and they're going to be figured out, I'm going to try to explain why they're builds we've seen before and why they're figured out. Uh, so forgive me if you've heard the commentary before. And, and hopefully uh, some of you find it edutaining. So blank is the choice because up against a variety of, of Terran options early. You got factory and starport. Essentially going Stargate is a gamble. Against Widow Mines, against Cyclones. Widow Mines can one shot Oracles. Um, and Phoenixes are unreliable. Whereas Blink Stalkers have not only the potential to defend, but also counter attack. Uh, potentially all the way into their base. And actually shading through with the Adept. So the Adept doesn't have as much vision when it's shading. So if you finish the shade, which I'm not entirely sure was intentional, but if you finish the shade. You're able to uh, see more into the base. And he confirms that Maru has plenty of Marines. But that doesn't preclude the Widow Mine drop. The Widow Mine in the newest patch got a, a slight nerf to its radius. It's a bit more visible when it's firing, but still an existential threat to the probes. And Maru's trace, but game one, he goes straight for the. He hid the, the Blink Stalkers on the ramp, waited to the last moment, has exactly enough Stalkers to two shot, and that is shut down harder than a blue screen computer right there. Hero. Off to a rousing start in game one. That is an unmitigated disaster for Maru, and Hero is intending on counterattacking immediately. He's got the warp prism this early. He didn't go for a robotics bay. He didn't get a bunch of observers. He already saw everything he needed to see, despite his blinking. And now Maru is forced onto the defensive as Hero. How many gates back at home? Four. With charge on the way. And he's just walking right by, thinking twice about it. There is a Liberator for some counter damage, and that is a lot of Marines and a couple Siege Tanks here. So Maru still has enough to be threatening, certainly out on the map. And if Hero was trying to take a third base, this would be very dangerous. But Hero's up inside Maru's base, and the Blink Stalkers are making their way by already killing a couple of the SCVs. Is that it's not a great counter to Liberator, so they can look up angrily at it, but that's about it for now. Gonna have to recall the Stalkers back home, and now Maru's army is coming across the map. Which means at the end of the day, Hero, uh, he's still, oh, he <laughs> stop right there. But he blinks in on top of the tank and then pulls the stalkers back with the prism. But now that Reaper wall may be used against him. The tank's all jammed into the corner. The Marines don't have stim. They don't have combat shield, but they do have a bone to pick with the Protoss here at their very own natural. And the stalkers trying to come in. Targets down a Liberator, but that's at a heavy cost there. The Stalkers targeted by Maru. The Zealots do not have charge. And Maru easily able to dispatch all of this right now. It's a disaster for Hero. He tried to commit to the Blink Stalkers, but Maru just walked up. But here come the Blink Stalkers on top within the safe distance of the tanks. 13 probes down. Hard to tell. Well, Hero's clearly in a bad spot here, but he's actually going to be able to defend. Okay. Wow. A hectic game one on a map more known for being uh, defensive. Here on Oceanborn, we can get three, maybe even four bases relatively safely. Well, nobody's safe with these two involved. Heroes down to 33%.
probes against 49 SCVs. Hero does not have a third base. Hero technically has a Robo Bay, but Splash Damage is a Disruptor in a Dream. Maru just started his Stim Pack upgrade, which he's been so focused on unit production, he hasn't managed to get any of the uh, uh, basic upgrades that a more mid-game army relies on. So that means Hero still has an opportunity here to get some damage done as these charge lots can close the distance on the tanks, and there simply aren't that many marines and absolutely no medevacs. He slices through the bunker, actually juggles back a couple of the zealots into the prism in order to keep them alive. Siege tanks on the high ground, few SCVs going down, any damage hero can do, as long as he keeps those stalkers intact especially, is good damage here. And the supplies just like that are evened up. Hero taking advantage of that lack attack out of Maru. And now he's taking advantage of the extra space in the natural. The Blink Stalkers, right on top of the tanks, there are two more tanks on the high ground. A Disruptor wanders into the fray, shots are fired, and without Stim, the Marines aren't able to dodge away too easily. Maru still maintaining a supply lead. For the first time in a while, there's nothing on the other side of the map, so Hero is the only one going to be able to do damage. Uh, at least for the near future. But he's got to be so careful not to overcommit. You can not You can only pick four Stalkers in the medevac at a time. Ooh. And it's quickly getting down to that number. Hero fires another shot around the side. Don't expect one of us in the wreckage, brother. The Marine left out to be incinerated. But everybody's got to calm down now. Because Maru... Well, oh, <laughs> the Hero said, no, I won't. Okay, well, he kind of has to, though. Because Maru now is going to have Stim. He has enough Marines to switch between his bases. Hero doesn't have a third. He's really leaning on this aggression. It's a double-edged sword. A double-edged side blade, if you would. Wait, I don't think side blades have edges. Not really important right now. Gets the reactor. And, yeah, he shouldn't be here. Maru completely blindsided by the Ruptor. Loses a tank. Hero should not be here, and therefore, he's caught Maru by surprise. But he's got to be so careful with that prism. Two disruptors inside. That's two Gs if it gets taken out that Hero's gonna have to type in. Oh my god, the Stalkers are still over here! Why are you here? Hero playing- And the boys! The boys are on the way across the map. The boys are back in town. The Disruptors are firing. He's using the Prism. Only gets a couple more Marines. Oh my god. Hero and his Warp Prisms are a cause of significant blood pressure raises. There is no third base for either side. Half the SCVs are across the map to buffer against an army that really will make quick work of them. Disruptors and Colossa in the field. Disruptors working their way through the tanks. And Maru, in such an awkward, this is so rare, where you pull the SCVs and then go back home with them. Like, this was total war here. But now they gotta go back home. Back to the minerals, back to the mines. <sighs> Nothing will ever compare. Oh, Hero's gonna bring the war to the front lines yet again. Not willing to let Maru uh, stay alone for more than a moment. Trying to keep pace at the moment. This is uh, the violence of action from Hero. His army is worse, but because he's taking the initiative, he's able to take constantly better fights. Because Maru is simply not expecting Hero to be sitting on his lawn with two Disruptors and two Colossi, throwing two Middle Fingers and Purification Novas at him. But here we are. The Siege Tank Colossus standoff, and for the first time, the players will take a third at <laughs> the Warp Prism and Medivac eye at each other. And we may be forced kicking and screaming into a longer game. Well, metaphorically screaming for the Protoss who don't have mouths. I have no mouth, but I must whine about Terran. Dark Shrine on the way. Bit of a risky investment, but that's been... Wow. Hero has plus three weapons started. Which is remarkably early, considering how this game has gone. A Spylon has spotted the medevac heading in. But there's a lot of dead space out there in the water. Or air. I think it's water here on Oceanborn. 
they've just battered each other so hard that neither player is feeling that well, we've reached the uh, uh, stage of the game where it's become more of a cold war than a hot one as between that many siege tanks disruptors colossi you simply can no longer afford to fight both sides have armies that are far too large um, and too dangerous to one another so mutually well not really mutually assured destruction but almost assured destruction if you attack into a bad angle so these drops are out on the map maru is anchoring some units home by having drops there hero knows they're there he can't do anything about them getting a stargate is is way too much of an investment when you're barely on three bases uh in order to take out things like medevacs at this stage Especially since those units can easily be taken down by, by stuff like Vikings, which are already in production to deal with the Colossi. DT Blink on the way is a late game option. Not as dangerous as it sounds, but still definitely one of the uh, spicier tools in the Protoss arsenal. In fact, the Protoss arsenal is mostly a spice cabinet with a few uh, um, slices of bread underneath, it feels like sometimes. What does that even mean? I don't know, but it sounded profound, kind of. Moving on. Immortals on the way. The army supplies in favor of Maru here. He's got tanks, he's got marines, marauders, and medevacs. A drop to the south drags some attention away. Shield battery overcharge. Already used. Colossi coming down. There is that warp prism. He hallucinates five Colossi into the fight. And even if Maru can see him, that doesn't mean they can't take the damage. And Zealots from the back is a single DT helping out as well. The DT slicing through some of the tanks, but Maru still 30 supply up when the smoke clears here. And the hallucinated Colossi, even if he knows or even if he scans, they still can potentially absorb some damage. Though I'm not convinced he meant to hallucinate eight Colossi there. He did lose all, this, all the sentries, but... Hero loses his fourth base, unable to compete with the army. The Vikings... Uh, stalkers look to box him out, but Hero is running out of time to take a fight here before he gets boxed back into his natural, which is running out of minerals. The tank's on the low ground. Can anything get by to deal with him? One Colossus down. Another three with no shields left. Vikings knock down another. There's still four siege tanks on the low ground. Five. A couple of them badly bruised. Maru, though, doesn't feel comfortable. There, there's a few DTs on the other side that are dragging attention. Killing SCVs. One tank left behind. Will be taken out with relative ease. Another DT. The distractions. They're, they're posing. He gets out of the scan. So the DTs are not doing so much economic damage as essentially having the same effect. Oh no, my god. They're having the same effect that the drops did earlier from Aura. Which is keeping the attention and some of the units off the front and that allows more opportunity god those dts actually did a lot what's the army supply well the army size is still in favor of maru but considering the dip there for hero the fact that not only is the game still going but hero still is in a aggressive position oh my and these scans maru doesn't have the dozen orbital commands of the late game. He only has four of them. Which means that, a sig especially since he's down to 41 SCPs, a significant portion of his economy is potentially in mules. And you can't drop nearly as many mules. You can't replace those SCVs with automation. Maru made a raven, and then immediately demonstrated why players don't usually bother with building a raven. Uh, he is getting interference matrix. I do love how he's he's doing exactly what you should do on paper. But the first raven flies directly into the Blink Stalkers. At least uh, after that point, Maru doesn't say never more and stop building ravens entirely. But uh, he does have, he has seven medevacs. I do appreciate a lot of Terrans will just default to building more medevacs. You'll see 11, 12 medevacs. Medevacs for all policy there, especially when the disruptors wipe everything out and they become obsolete. But the ghost out in front, EMP, always a danger to essentially just gestures wildly at Protoss. It will wipe out a hundred shields and energy. 
on everything, though Guardian Shield, uh, if used beforehand, will still be maintained. Guardian Shield reduces the range damage of everything inside. Uh, range damage taken by two. So essentially all Terran damage except SCVs. It doesn't reduce the damage of EMP, though, because that's... It's different. All right, just trust me, bro. Science. So the, the summary is that Guardian Shield. Uh, Marines, by default, I believe seven damage. So it, it... Oh, whoa, not important now. As not too many Marines survived that first engagement. Hero blunks in over the top, flings out some fadeaway shots, and knocks into the... the so many of the ghosts there. The Ravens are coming up, looking for interference matrices, loses one, links off to the side, force fields, stream the Marines through, allows the Colossi to get some beautiful rows, anti-armor missile, gonna Dorito dust the center of the pack though, Colossi tumbling on those spindly legs there, another couple EMPs go off, Zealots on the back, and now Hero is leveraging that superior economy. Scans, those are GG scans. Oh no. Maru's scanning to see how many bases Hero has. He's not tapping out yet. He still has a strong army. But look at the upgrades. 3-2 versus 1-1. One, one. In any fight that is dragged out more than the initial few seconds, those upgrades really help out. The disruptors, of course, don't care about them. But the rest of the units will stay alive longer with the armor. And the Colossi get a lot of extra value out of the weapons. So Maru has... Uh, he's been on life support. Eh, well, with that many medevacs, it's hard to say it's like that, but... Maru has not been able to lay down the killing bow, and Hero has been investing in this later game army for a while. The upgrades especially. And Maru just taps out, even before a decisive engagement, I believe. Were there still some zealots on the other side? No. Just, uh, knew he wasn't going to be able to deal with the economy. So Hero... Holds on for game one. He's able to hold the line and power his way through. So a solid effort there to start things off. And that brings us, well, I didn't expect Hero to take Oceanborn, which is quite a, uh, historically, well, not well, uh, historically as in like the last six months, but is a pretty comfortable Terran map. So that does bode well for Hero going forward. I think what he really did was keep the initiative. He stayed up in Maru's face with his blank stalkers, waving them around. And even though it cost him a lot of his stalkers, Maru never felt like he could move out without someone watching him. That's what stalkers do, all right? They got their bandanas for their disguise. Now, what are the bandanas covering? That's more of a philosophical question and inappropriate for this format. Moving on, game two, Alkyoni. All right, I googled it. It's like a Greek... Um, I forget now. So it's Greek, though. So, Elkioni. Not a cyclone. Though I, I expect we're going to have at least one throughout this series. For those who have been following SC2, but maybe not super closely over the last year or two, um, we've had a couple patches involving the cyclone. Yep. Um, where it's gone from... A expensive tech lab kind of glass cannon. It's now a lot cheaper. It is 125 minerals, 50 gas, and can be built from... It doesn't require a tech lab, so it can be built off a reactor as well. It also does bonus damage to mechanical units, which includes stalkers, probes, other cyclones, much to Terran's dismay. So in the newest patch, though, about a month ago, um, the cyclone now has a little more HP than it did. But it does a little less damage, has a little less attack speed. And the lock-on has a longer cooldown. So generally it's a tankier unit, but less um, game ending when it's in a good spot. So it's a little closer to a mech marauder than a mech marine. Though those are very rough comparisons. It's still quite a solid choice against, uh, well, Stargate, speaking of. Going to be Widowmine into Cyclone here. Second base on the high ground. I'm not sure if Maru saw anything that prompted him to build the command center on the high ground. Usually Terrans, yes, it's safer, but you do spend a little extra time 
Um, you do spend a little... Oh, he went for just one marine. Or reactor first here. Which means he would not have had enough units to deal with the Adept. You need at least three marines to deal with the Adept. So he may have gotten his command center delayed with the build he's doing if he had put it on the low ground. Um, but now... Not even bothering with the orbital. He wants to get it down there as quick as possible. Which is interesting. Reaper. Gonna go past the little mineral walls here. That is a real live phoenix. Alright, not, not one of those hallucinated ones. And... Ooh, we're doing mech toughs. Alright, we'll see. We'll see if Maru breaks out. Mech against Protoss. Still not much of a thing, but mech as Protoss. Uh, it has... You can't hide. Down goes the Reaper. Well, up. But never came back down. Where were we? Oh, yes. A much more passive early game. The Phoenix is in position. The Stargate kind of precludes... Like, you can still do things like Whittlevine or Cyclone drops. But, uh, having the Stargate out there has kept Maru... Oh, he's pulling Tacta Boys. Just enough SCVs for some repair to muddy the waters here. He's got a very early mid-game mixed mech push. An MMA push here. Mixed mech activities. Uh, he's got plenty of Marines mixed in as well, but if the Phoenix is... Oh, he's got to pick up that Widow Mine. Wait till it's almost broke. Technically, you can repair in the air. Now, why can't the SCVs also attack while, while units are in the air? Don't ask. All right, Nanites. He actually saves the clone with the SCVs and takes out a Phoenix, which is quite a big deal going into this push. As there is a Liberator mixed in, the Immortal is going to be a huge part of defending. Takes out a clone. And that Liberator is being targeted. The Immortal is vulnerable. Saves him with... Saves the Cyclones with the Medevac. And the Immortal goes down. And now the Cyclone's able to lock out and chase it down. There's just so many Terran units here. There is no Blink. He's building more Phoenixes. Another one is on the way. Does he have Overcharge? No Overcharge. I, I assume he used all the energy. Maybe he wants to drop that Cyclone down. Gotta be careful with the Phoenix. No third base. The Stalkers are just retreating to nowhere. The SCV's still out in front. Retargets the Immortal onto the Clown. Chases down a couple more Stalkers. Phoenix is trying to get more work done. The Immortal coming up. Another Liberator is piling in. He got an Observer out, but that's definitely not what he needs right now. Maru continues grinding his way through. Hero not able to get to his third base as Maru is, is sitting right on top of it. And the Liberator does so much damage to the Immortal. The SCV! The N okay. The SCV was out for it. It's still chasing it, but will be taking it out itself. Hero? My god. Another chaotic early game here. The Immortal coming up, but the shields are down, and it's taken out. <laughs> I, uh, I, well, Hero holds. But at what cost? Two Immortals, five Phoenixes, and some gateway units in there. Five Cyclones, two Liberators, the Medevac, 20 Marines, and of course the Brave SCVs. So now it's Hero's turn. He's getting a Fleet Beacon. He's Excuse me? What is this? The beacon is lit! Is he going mothership? He's getting a second Stargate, so that makes me think it's gonna be carriers. Um... He's getting plus one air as well. I don't know. Oh my god, he commits. And he takes out a raven. He loses 1.9 phoenixes for it. I don't know. I carriers. This man, man. I can't tell if that's genius or throwing, but I don't feel like there's much in between there. That is certainly a dramatic choice. Immediately gets a carrier. Okay. So the reason why a lot of the time carriers are, if ever used, a very late game choice at this level 
is simply Maru won't get caught or is very unlikely to be caught um, not knowing they exist. The old adage of how do you stop 12 carriers being don't let them get 12 carriers against a player like Maru. If you watch Maru versus Classic in the same tournament where he nuked the uh, Protoss Jesus out of those carriers, which I think is like Tassadar. So um, moving on. He, even in that game, where, where it ended with a nuke, he didn't need the nuke, in my opinion. He was already well uh, stocked and well prepared. Mass turrets across the map. On this map, that's why the Deja Vu is strong right now. So, the carriers will be here. The only anti-air is a bunch of uh, marines without combat shield or stim. So, Hero has a good chance of driving this back. There are Tempest on the way as well. Which are less potential but more guaranteed damage because those interceptors are finicky creatures indeed maru not intimidated by the carries will just fight the interceptors which if you stay far enough back you can just focus on them so it is a delicate dance on both sides infantry one done heroes going for tectonic destabilizers building damage for the tempest all right but he scrambles the carriers and the marines get underneath they got Stim, and they're chasing things down. The pylons are being targeted. The Marines are running through the mineral line, and it's an absolute disaster for Hero. The carriers have arrived, but they've been locked down by the Ravens, and 14 probes. The call to go carriers was a big one, but it may have been the wrong one. Maru is just ignoring the Protoss units to kill probes, to kill Nexi. He's killed the third. He's very well going to get the fourth. He's got 11 SCVs. There's a mothership on the way. I don't know, like, the mothership, if it still had Vortex. If it, we were to... Stop. <laughs> Look who I got. Well, he gets a couple consolation tanks. But Hero is down to 44 workers. Right now, Maru has 69 SCVs, which is a nice economy going into the mid game. Well, not even really into the mid game. The, the units say late game, but the supplies say early game, and I say mid game. So well, we're going to have to agree to disagree, schizophrenically. But Ghost Academy on the way 2 2. Carriers are not a rich man's unit. You got to pay per interceptor. Essentially, you're taxed for fighting. Assuming you keep the carriers alive. And now Maru has a 50 supply lead. Now, if Hero is able to rebuild... He's actually... He draws out the Widowmine hit. Trying to drag it into the Marines. The Tempests are giving a deep tissue massage to a lot of these Terran units before they get healed up by the annoyed Medivacs. Who will run out of energy. But... Oh, the Marines just go stimming down. Down goes one Tempest. He's just targeting interceptors. Ooh. I don't know, Kev. The Marauders just running past. Here I go, kill it again. And the, the interceptors are gone. There's one carrier just tickling the Marauders. He recalls out with the carriers to where the natural... But Maru with a vengeance here, and and is there? There is no splash damage on the field. Hero's just doubling down on the carriers, which at this point he's so far down this road, he just has to see it to its conclusion. I think he canceled the mothership. Tell me he didn't lose it. All right, he canceled it to build more carriers, which kind of makes sense, as the mothership is an okay late game support unit but probably doesn't provide more than having a, another carrier or two now those units are over stimmed as he doesn't have enough energy on the medevacs but he has plenty of vikings overhead down goes one more carrier but the interceptors now now the key part of fighting carriers is knowing you can win before the fight because if the fight goes on you're forced to retreat you're going to lose most of your units Shield battery overcharge is gone. The Vikings are just knocking out the carriers 
Meanwhile, the Marauders are just taking out the Nexus. And there it goes. Heroes back down to two bases. EMPs. Are they needed? I don't think so. But Maru takes game number two. Strikes back. I think there was an opportunity there for Hero to really take advantage of the situation. But he chose carriers. Which... I'm not convinced. If it had worked, he looks like a genius. But it's such a long reach in such a relatively low economy scenario that I think Hero just uh, was stretched too thinly to deal with the follow-up. And that brings us to game three. A map that does not bode well for Protoss, as it's named after one of Terran's favorite units. It's Ghost River. Which is our smallest map, the least amount of bases. Actually, not the shortest rush distance unless you take down the uh, the rocks here. But overall, only six bases per side. Not that we've gotten anywhere close to that in these games, but... Maru, going with the two gas. The two gas is a staple of early game. Terran versus Protoss. Because very simply, Protoss units early are a lot to deal with. Marines aren't that good until they get their upgrades, until they get their drugs, until they get their guns. My neighbors would make great Marines, but a stalker on the way, even a single stalker can kite Marines across the entire map. But for Protoss, in order to invest in your tech, 100 gas for a Robo, 100 gas for a Twilight, 150 for a Stargate. These are expensive investments on top of another 50 gas just to get warp gate. And then all your early game units also cost gas, including the sentry, which is 100. Can he do the little... Uh, they're, they're, I don't know how it's done. And I don't think ever, most pro players know how it's done, but you can do a little grenade bounce on the Reaper over the pylon in some ways on some maps. But it seems to be more like um, whispering to the prophets as opposed to uh, some sort of reliable strategy. Anyways, moving on. So the two gas is just both for defense and offense. It essentially invalidates early, like, one base builds out of Protoss. And it keeps them guessing, as you can't scout past that wall. All right? They build a wall, and they keep the Protoss out, uh, no matter how much shade they throw. So it's very hard, without committing to something like a hallucinated phoenix, to know whether it's going to be cyclones, whether it's going to be widow mines, there's going to be even Hellions. Occasionally you get more starport-oriented plays. Sometimes it's just mass barracks. But either way, the ambiguity of this opener is what gives it its strength at this level. Now, you have to be comfortable with those early game Terran units, which are admittedly not easy to use. Like things like uh, Siege Tank Pushes, Ravens, where you're reliant. Like on last game with the Cyclone, Medivac, Viking, Liberator. I don't think there are any Vikings. But that is an incredibly technical push that I wouldn't trust. There's like a low single digit number of people that aren't Mari um, to do that push. It's Clem, it's beyond an end of list. Widowmind drop comes in. The Reaper is at the natural finding damage. Widowmind just gonna do some Prairie Dog micro here. Sacrifices the probe. There's still out there the Medivac. Looking for its opportunity to come back in. It's going to be a cloaked banshee behind. And Hero is going to go back to the Blink and the Robo, which does cover all your bases um, in every sense of the word. Yeah, beautiful over that river. Probably wouldn't want to swim in it, though. You have to go outside to go swimming, so... Yeah. Maru is really trying to keep control of the situation. I think game one was defining in that Hero was able to stay on Maru's doorstep, just constantly dictating the fights. So Maru has made strong efforts to retake the initiative uh, so far. Going with Siege Tank Cloak Banshee is certainly a way to do so. Third base is on the way. Two clo- wait, is that two or is that just a really cool reflection? It was a reflection. Ah, oh, that was sick. This reminds me of Hades. 
I mean, here's the Ghost River party. Anyways, Widowmine Drop comes back, Hero. Now, much easier to see which probe's gonna be hit, so that way we know that Hero really messed up and loses five probes. I do like the change, but Hero not liking that Widowmine there. Five probes down. Hero only one ahead here. There's a shield battery, but he can't overcharge till the base is actually done. And now there are two siege tanks. I don't think the battery's gonna last that long. And the, the Banshee comes around the back. And suddenly, uh, the third base seeming a bit ambitious. Banshee Micro's back. Not quite gonna get it. A scan could maybe get both. Oh, no. He could target both observers. He gets them, which means the Banshees now have free reign, though he did kill both siege tanks. Trying to target the sentry there. Third Nexus, still intact. It hasn't actually taken that much damage, but that's going to change now. The Banshee's able to focus on it yet again. Almost out of energy, so even if the Observer is not part of this. Another siege tank coming up. That third Nexus is running out of HP very quickly. See uh, the sentry? Oh, he's just going to get the third. It's too late. Hero is supply block now. Unable to warp in more units, he's going to chase things down with a blink. But just unstim marines with some medevacs and siege tanks on the back line. Oh, the sentry. <laughs> oh. One more for the road. Going to chase down the marines. Tank forced to siege again. He oh. It's, it's such a hard line. Blinking out. And the amount of banshees that Mauro is just bringing out here. If he ever turns his back, Hero's going to chase him down. Gotta be very careful of blinking too far forward. Don't do it, Hero. What? No! Well, that was not... Hero was towing the line, and then he just tripped over it and stumbled face first into a siege tank at the top of the ramp. The thought process was, I'll kill the tank and keep it going, but... He's lost 16 stalkers. I think he just lost five or six in that. <sighs> Literally the blink of a stalker is all it takes to go from a tenuous position to a terrible one. And that one was, uh... Now there's a lot of ground to make up. There is a, a warp prism. All right. How do you do? What are you guys up to? Um, well, this is a bit awkward. There's some Templar. Storm is on the way. Storm drops potentially uh, a, a big part of this, but they need to be in position in time. And Medivacs, still a good skill to have. Medivacs coming around. Templar. Drop out of the prism. The storms will make the medevacs uncomfortable. Feedbacks help out as well. Still a lot of the bio army intact. The banshees are coming up. Another. Ooh, that's a big storm. And actually, Maru, enough of his army softened up here. Is that an Archon drop? He drops on top here. He's just juggling over the army. Loses one Archon. Another ridiculous fight. Oh, and the Templar was firing its water balloons. There are three siege tanks, though. And on siege, they're going to beat the Stalkers. Siege, they'll still beat the Stalkers. It just depends on the position. Charge is on the way, but again, here we go again. Deja vu. We've just been in this place before. Blinking across the map and hoping he doesn't go too far. Oh, he lost the Archon. That's not ideal. But he gets a tank, warping in some Zealots. Charge is almost done. Maru may have overstayed his welcome, and now it might cost him his advantage. Hero... Working on plus one attack, he managed to get his third. The observer is taken out, which is going to make it harder for for Hero to make the make an educated decision about blinking up into siege tanks. But he's made up a lot of ground here. Those storms actually did a great job in evening things up. War prism into the natural. He just kind of threw everyone he could in there. I'm gonna take out. The uh, missile turret building SCV and the Sim City here, which helps uh, zone out the prism, is also kind of working against Maru when it comes to defending. But Hero survives. And Maru, well, he's still got a very strong army. He's got the right units here. It is still, uh, I think, very much on Hero 
to find an engagement angle, especially until he gets his plus one done. He's got Templar, he's got Colossi, but he doesn't have too much else. The army supply, 61 to 49. The Templar looking for an angle. He gets some storms off. He gets an Archon merge, a very important part of this. Shield battery overcharge gonna help out on the back line. And now the medevac count is high, but the unit count is not. Hero with another solid defense. And every time Maru comes up against him, it seems like Hero's driving him further back and more quickly. Well done so far. Literally caught between a rock and a hard place on that ramp, but Hero within four supply. Maru just now building an armory. He's getting some Vikings, uh, siege tanks. I have some ghosts on the field as well. Disruptors are on the way. How many, how many robotics? Just one robo at the moment for Hero. But still holding. Hero's done a great job of recovering here. And it's near even. At the end of the day, the issue is uh, the complexity of the... That prism. <laughs> Zealots drop out. That prism, uh... Hmm. Gonna be chased down. I don't know if the Vikings will be able to get it. Probably won't commit too far, otherwise the Stalkers could come join up with it. Spots the Stalkers on the low ground. Here's gotta be fast on the reaction he is. Still might lose one or two. We're gonna duel it out in the center of the map. Thermal Lance. Uh, Colossus range. Nearly completed. Guardian shield. The peacock feathers there, indicating he wants to attack. Oh, EMP. Got all but one Templar. Disruptor shot. Kills a Marauder. Storm! Has to merge the Archons. The Stalkers are just getting gunned down. The Colossus is knocked over. Another Colossus wanders into the fray. There's a War Prism in the back doing some damage. But Maru just wiped out three quarters of the splash damage without even a fight. And now he's arcing out around a Shield Battery Overcharge. There's one Colossus and one Archon. And that's about to be none. A few Zealots on the other side aren't going to make up for this. And Maru takes out the third, yet again. Vikings. The Colossus trying to hide. Uh, there's still a siege tank. He blinks to the side to deal with it. There's that one Archon in front. Colossus starting to work on both sides. There's nothing to protect it. And Maru just powers through. The hero spent so much time pulling himself up by his zealot bootstraps in order to drag this close to even. But Maru crushes the army in a decisive fight, and the house of cards tumbles as Hero is driven out. Two to one, Maru. Going into game four. Really thought that it would just end at the third. So a testament to Hero's tenacity to survive that long. Maru very clearly trying to end the game before we can get to that kind of mass disruptor splash damage tsunami stage. And Hero not quite letting that happen, but at the same time, you know what they say, that which doesn't kill you leaves you potentially permanently crippled and suffering for the rest of your existence. And so far, those sorts of strategies have been quite effective. We're going in to game four on site delta. Maru two to one. Bottom right, Maru in the red. Hero top left in the blue. Was he actually building a zealot here? He went cyber core first before Nexus. It looks like yes. Maru's going to build the command center on the high ground. I think he just understands his opponent well. The command center on the high ground is uh, kind of a rare choice, but I think against Hero. It makes a lot of sense. Zealot headed out. Did, did Hero see the CC? He did. So I'm not sure. Well, if there's a Marine first, there's not a Reaper. I mean, 
a big brain there, but uh, without a Reaper, the, the Zealot isn't really vulnerable to anything early, so you can maybe find something. Showing the Zealot gives a lot of way as well, but he might be able to come up the ramp and deny the reactor swap, which would be the most convenient timing, but he's not going to do it if there's a... The timing has to be impeccable because Maru can just, you know, not at the moment. The Zealot will angrily bash at the reactor, wondering why the most advanced Protoss warriors have melee weapons. And the answer is, like most things, because it's way cooler. Mar a Marine, an offering to the Zealots. A Marine pops out on the wrong side of the reactor, as happens occasionally. Uh, and gets sliced up. Cyclone is out, though, which will preclude any further aggression, as the Cyclone can hunt down any of those gateway units. Gonna be Blink, not a hero. Has uh, abandoned the Stargate, at least since game two. How many gates? Just two? No, going for three. All right, so potential aggression here. Third command center for Maru. How did I... Just kind of snuck that one in there. As is customary. Just... So I feel like Maru just always has a command center, and it's just cloaked or something. He always just ends up with another one. Though these games have been relatively low economy. This is the first time we've actually seen the third CC, but... He gets away with so much. Will he get away with this, though? As there is no starport, because going for that third command center means pretty much no gas except for the clones. Hero gonna try some aggression here. He's got the Adept Shade, but there's still a lot of Marines to buffer. He's warping in more Stalkers, slowly. At the proxy pylon here, blink done in 10 seconds. The bunker, slightly more than that. Kind of an important point. Very limited time on this. He's gonna deny, he goes over the top. Stop the bunker. Stop the bunker. Stop the bunker! Oh no. He does not stop the bunker. And even though he kills some SCVs and gets a cyclone, Maru has three CCs. He can just throw away SCVs as melee warriors. <laughs> At this stage, especially against the two base Protoss. He doesn't know for sure heroes on two base, though. Oh my god. Um. Well, that is what we like to call in the business. Uh, bad. That. Did not go well. Maru's siege tank in the right spot at the right time, and Hero blunked right into it. He, he teleported himself. He got telefragged there. Sometimes just because you, you can doesn't mean you should. And now... He, he, he blinked once and now he's missing his stalkers. How many has he lost? Eight stalkers for six marines and two cyclones and three SCVs. There's also two adepts and a zealot in there. Let's not forget them. But that third CC is just... Here's gonna see it. He's gonna realize, oh no. <laughs> he really should have had an opportunity to do more damage here. Against 3cc, against an opponent who doesn't have a starport. So he's going to continue working on it, but... With those mules... Maru could be 10 SCVs down and still be comfortable on income. And he's not. He's up 3. So... The Marines will be picked off. Ghetto blinking with the prism. But this is a disastrous start for Hero. You can tell, like, he's trying to retake the initiative with the blink stars. But... Didn't work out this time. The first two medevacs on the way. The triple threat. Stim combat shield and plus one upgrades. In production. Marvelous double NG base. Three... No, I take that back. Five barracks are done. So... What? Okay. Hero. Oh my god. 
Why? And some Tacti Boys? Or is he just transferring to his third? Either way, the Siege Tank push. Even though it feels like Maru's taking his time, that's because he has the minimum time taken. He's got to get his medevacs. He's got to get Stim and Combat Shield. But he, his institutional, his infrastructure momentum here, he's already invested in all of the production and all of the uh, just upgrade infrastructure that he needs. So all he has to do is survive this sort of attack. The base is lifted. Combat Shield is about to finish, but they're quite vulnerable for the moment. And it finishes mid-fight. Has to juggle back the Colossus. And an Immortal goes down. Colossus gonna find a lot of damage on the Marines here. He just goes forward with the Marauders. Seven SCVs dead, but Hero is not building probes behind. He's relying on this getting the damage done. He's trying to get the... He has to end the game, or at least do critical damage here to make this worth it. The Colossi conspicuously stepping forward to engage. Right now, distracted by the orbital. But trying to target fire. There are no Vikings, but there are plenty of Marauders. And they have one one done. They're just shrugging off the thermal lances here. Here, oh, juggling the Colossus. Bit of a clown fiesta, but he's going to warp in another round of Stalkers. Maru's at 60 SCVs. He's building some Vikings now. Medivacs are out of energy. Well, that's an ambitious uh, Viking. A third Colossus stepping up to the plate. If Maru just A moves into the Colossi, he finds a bad angle. Oh, that's when things go sideways here. You just gotta be careful not to get distracted. The supply depots are there because Colossi are so easily distracted. With that long range, sometimes they don't get aggroed onto uh, actual units until it's too late. So they require a surprising amount of babysitting for um, essentially colossal uh, alien war machines. The Zealots into the natural. The force fields will zone out the army. Maru forced to retreat, gonna lose a lot of SCVs. And this is a rough angle to engage into. Uh, 18 SCVs dead. And he can potentially just recall out. This may have been worth it. Well, he needs to keep the, he's gonna warp it. Oh no, the Colossi just absolutely crumble. Still though, 29 SCVs dead. That is a very significant number. Hero now has the worker lead. His unit count is 49 probes and an observer, which is certainly not very much, but what did it cost? Literally everything. Every single unit that Hero had that wasn't one observer is, is what he spent in that attack. So now he has to rebuild his army from nothing. And now Maru, he has 2-2 on the way. Ah, uh, I think there was a moment there where Hero could have recalled out and been content with the damage he did. But now he's going to be critically dead. That force field is incredibly optimistic. Disruptor shot. One Marine. JJ, Maru goes to match point. Well... These games are, while Maru seems to always have the the edge, or almost always, Hero is still one good fight away from turning. But it seems a lot harder to get that good fight than it is to find a bad one. It's still surprisingly close for how things end, but that is TVP in a nutshell, is the units are so good against each other. Whether it's Disruptors or Bile, uh, or just blink stalkers in general. Well, here we are. Going into potentially our final game on Amphion. One of our most dramatic new maps. There's some interesting features. In the, in the bottom left, we have the seven time, now one game away from eight time. GSL champion. It's Mara. And in the top left, in the blue... Has to win three in a row. We have Hero. 
Hopefully you've enjoyed. I know it's been a dramatic series. And these games are... Well, they're not... I don't know for better or worse. They're not the drawn-out late game that we've been seeing a lot of lately. But hopefully you've enjoyed my commentary. I want to thank GSL again. You can find the info. Jimmy, put the info in the description to support GSL. This is the first year, or second year now. Second year. They all blend together. That GSL has allowed um, us to cast, like outside of the uh, official tournament itself, um, the games. So hopefully you enjoy my take on the commentary. Hopefully, I, I made, I've been making an extra effort to kind of explain some of those early game interactions and why they are what they are. Um, and hopefully you found that edutaining. Or especially if you're maybe haven't played in a while or you uh, made it this far and you haven't played at all. I think you're out there. Um, hopefully. But uh, hopefully it's been helpful. And if you think so and you haven't made it there yet, it'd be awesome if you could like and subscribe. And if you hadn't noticed, we've been adding plus one to the likes count for almost 300 videos now. And why have we been doing that? Because it works. Gets a lot more people interested. YouTube likes it. Everyone likes it. Um, gets more people to watch the best game in the world. So, thank you for watching. I hope to always bring you good games for the fans. And now hopefully Hero can bring us three more. The Shades continuing by. He's gone with a multi-adept opener. He's, he's showing... So when you go with adepts in this number this early... Oh my god, the revolving door of adept shades. That's almost trolling. It looks like a Stargate, though. Uh, usually, when you see this, it's Stargate. Because going for those adepts, uh, you're saving gas when you go blink. Uh, if you're going blink, usually you open stalkers for obvious reasons. But the adepts here maybe have baited Maru into thinking it's a Stargate. I'm not 100%. But it is also an odd map in that we have the uh, close positions by air. There's actually a mineral wall here that Hero is currently mining through. There's no way for ground units to just walk over there until you do so. And now the Widow Mine drop is coming in at an awkward timing, as all the Stalkers have already moved out. The probes are pulled. The Widow Mines will find two probes and a lot of mining time, and Adept shaded in will be taken out just as easily. And now four Blink Stalkers, enough to one-shot uh, non-combat shield Marines or SCVs. Not as great again. Oh. Playing with absolute siege tank fire here, but. Recalls the stalkers to the natural on seeing the widow mine drop. Amaru perfectly timed, by the way. Gets five probes, and he gets out with the medevac. So between the mining time losses and now seven probes in total, I think for two widow mines, um, definitely valid. He also got the recall, which means. He knows that Hero is not... I, either Hero's not out on the map, or if he is, he's committed. He can't just come back to defend. So now it's going to get weird, as they're on either sides of things. Hero down to the left uh, on that kind of locked away portion, whereas Maru just going for the straight up attack. And there's no way for Hero to get back to his side of the map with all these stalkers. Maru is at his doorstep with siege tanks and on his main base with a liberate. Meanwhile, though, the Blink Stalkers are cutting off absolutely everything at the natural. It's going to be a bloodbath, a slugfest. There's carnage on both sides. 12 probes down. The Robo obliterated. Pylon depowers plus one. The Liberator has like 14 kills in the main base. Absolutely terrible, terrible damage being dealt. And Maru, he just has so much. Hero got outmaneuvered, and it may cost him this Global StarCraft League Championship. The Liberator goes down, but so does the Nexus. It's a disaster. And Maru, with a simple yet effective attack there, he uses the knowledge that Hero is certainly out of position. Wow. The most obvious Dark Shrine, but least 
unexpected of all time. He uses the knowledge that Hero is not at home, he can't recall, and he just walks up and clocks him across the face. One more forward blink for the road, Hero. Two observers wander into the fray. But make no mistake, that is game-ending damage. It would take a remarkable blunder here from Maru, who has a third command center. And it's done. It's over. Maru takes it. Four to one. A tough series of games for Hero. Still keeping it remarkably close. It wasn't dragged out. It was dramatic. He goes out with a bang instead of a whimper. But he goes out nonetheless. Well, that will conclude. That's eight. Eight. GSL championships for Maru. The by far the most. I don't think anyone else has over four. Either way, he's collecting them. He's got almost a ring for each finger. I don't know if they give him rings, but they should. Either way, congratulations to Maru for winning this first season of 2024. Look forward to next season starting soon with Rainer. Yes, the Italian Stallion will be joining once again for one more attempt at uh, going deep in the GSL. So look forward to next season. You can find it here or on the GSL channel. You can support. Uh, the info's in the description if Jimmy does his job right. But either way, if you got the means of motivation, it'd be awesome to check out Patreon, YouTube membership. But I hear liking and subscribing is still free for now. Thank you for watching. I hope I made your day just a little bit better. I'll see you next time. Good luck. Have fun. Stay chill.